welcome. I'm Barkha Dath and you're watching the Buck Stop Sierra. Big focus today continues to be Jammu and Kashmir and these were the images out of the valley today. The Home Minister on a reach out visit, striking a conciliatory tone. But as you can see in those pictures, the Chief Minister in a combative, aggressive, angry mood, even closing that press conference before the Home Minister was quite ready to do so, ending by telling journalists to have a cup of tea. After an argument, when a reporter said to her, that she was behaving very differently from how she had as an opposition leader in 2010, which was the last time that the valley saw a major unrest of this kind. And Omar Abdullah, now opposition leader, was then chief minister. Mehbooba Mosti being combative, the home minister being conciliatory. How should we read this press conference today? There were important announcements at the press conference, the most important of them being the Home Minister indicating that in the next three, four days, we will see an end to the use of the contentious pellet guns in the valley that have blinded permanently or partially. And we've been bringing you those ground reports. Many Kashmiris, including young Kashmiris between the ages of 16 and 18, including a young victim, young Insha, who became the face of the pellet gun debate. The Home Minister reiterating his promise that he's open to talking with anybody, but not quite naming the Huryat conference. How do we see this reach out? Well, this reach out is happening at a time when the centre has to also prepare a plan B. Rahul Srivastav, my colleague, is with me now. Now, Rahul, this is a very complicated situation. We're looking at 48 days of unrest. We're looking at this press conference that took place today where the Home Minister sounds composed, the Chief Minister sounds angry, she sounds anxious, she sounds combative. And we are also looking at a situation where a PDP MP, Muzaffar Beg, says on this program last night that if the agenda of alliance is not implemented, we should end the alliance. It's discrediting the PDP. What are you hearing from the BJP? Is the PDP now conveying its nervousness, its political nervousness about what this unrest is causing it politically on the ground? Barkha, the nervousness was conveyed to the government some time back. And after that, there was this meeting on the 18th of August between Finance Minister Mr. Arun Jaitley and Prime Minister. And then there were meetings between the Prime Minister and the Home Minister. And the alarm bells have been ringing. In fact, Mr. Rajnath's visit to Kashmir is largely because of that kind of a sensing of a crisis and a, perhaps a desperate attempt to at least retract some kind of normalcy in Kashmir. Primarily because of the fact that what Mr. Baig told you in the interview, that the PDP is extremely jittery. Given the kind of unrest and the reason for the unrest, somewhere the PDP believes it is losing ground terribly. It is isolated. All the opposition parties are together. There is Pakistan, there is Hurriyat, and there is strife on the ground. In that, the PDP is fighting for political survival. And that is why somewhere the government is worried that PDP might take the, uh, the drastic step of walking out of the coalition. That is why Mr. Rajnath Singh's visit is one big element is to calm the jitters as far as the PDP is concerned. Plan B, definitely the government is working out because in case the worst happens, then the government has to be prepared. And one of them could be a change in the governor in Jammu and Kashmir. What we are hearing, the government sources are saying Mr. Vora has done a good job till now, but right now they may need somebody better with more energy and ideas as far as Kashmir is concerned. And also the fact, as a signal to people in Kashmir, perhaps a non-army man it will be considered as the next governor of Jammu and Kashmir. But it's a long haul the government seems to be preparing for. All right, so no quick fix solutions in sight. Uh, the, the BJP has to prioritize keeping that alliance intact. Uh, Rahul, as you said, the PDP developing some jitters and conveying those jitters about what this may be costing them politically. Now, nobody in the PDP is actually saying this except one man. He's been the former deputy chief minister. He's a member of parliament. He was the PDP representative at the all-party meeting. And this is what he indicated on the buck stops here just yesterday. He said, and this is the word he used, the alliance could discredit the PDP while the BGP remains secure in Jammu if the agenda agreement between the two parties is not implemented. Listen to a brief excerpt. Would you advise Mehbooba Mufti to stay the course of the alliance or would you advise her for the sake of political longevity for the party to, 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 to break it? Well, I, I would say that if the purpose for which the alliance was the reason they thought, the reason, the purpose for which this alliance was formed, if that uh, purpose is not solved, not because of inaction, but because of a deliberate policy of BJP or Sankh Parivar, then I would be a person who would like to walk out of this alliance. 
All right, so Muzaffar Beg actually said that if the agenda of alliance is not implemented, I would like to walk out of this alliance. The PDP is being discredited. The BJP is safe in Jammu. And if this alliance is not implemented, he went on to say it's not worth the paper he's written on. This, as the Home Minister reaches out in the valley, but the but as we said, two very different tones, a combative chief minister, a conciliatory home minister. On the panel today, Sambit Patra of the BJP is with us, or Wahidur Rehman Para of the PDP is with us in the studio with me, Tanvir Sadiq of the National Conference. We're also joined by General Atta Hasnain, uh, the former general officer commanding of 15 Corps uh, in the Kashmir Valley, Professor Hamida Naeem, uh, who is of course a, 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 with the Kashmir Center for Social and Developmental Studies, and Shahid Siddiqui, editor Nay Dunya, was also one of um, the, the track to delegate that Rajnath Singh uh, actually met with in Delhi and we'll bring him up in a moment. Um, Sambit, very interesting, uh, different persona struck by the two leaders. Uh, the BJP, otherwise known for ideological aggression on Kashmir, actually sounding uh, soft and gentle and the chief minister sounding somewhat angry. Though I'm not a body language expert and I would not transgress into those lines. I'm a political spokesperson. I would maintain... Uh, my, my statement politically that's what we have been saying back from the very beginning we want reconciliation we want peace we want normalcy and that's what was reflected by the statement of the home minister mr rajnath singh as far as the respected chief minister of uh, jammu and kashmir uh, mehbooba mufti ji is concerned well yes certain questions were thrown to her in a wrong way and she replied back in a uh, in a different way what was way. the wrong question what did you find was the wrong question the question no, no, she I said, said that it was, it was a wrong about... question. It's not for me to decipher. Yeah. She said to the last question, which particularly asked her that was it a changed Mehbooba Mufti yes. uh, compared uh, to her stand in 2010? Then yes. she very factfully, in fact, said that, well, this is what the situation in 2010 was. There was an encounter which was false. But in this case that is happening today, Burhan Wani and the two other terrorists who were killed, it was a true encounter. And in fact, she has put lid upon certain questions which had been cropping up in the media often in these debates that Mehbooba Mufti somewhere was against the encounter. Uh, contrary to this kind of statement that has been floating around, she in fact put a lid to these kind of okay, controversial so statements. So let me said, take no, that to Wahid. It was a real encounter. Let me take that to your ally Wahidur, uh, Wahidur Rahman Para. Wahid, the Mehbooba Mufti I remember used to vis visit the homes of the children of militants. I'm not even talking about separatists, the children of militants. And when I would ask her, why do you do this? She said, Bacho ki kya galti hai? Now today, this is a different Mehbooba was the question put to her. She got angry. Why did she get angry? Well, I think you need Barka, everybody in the panel and especially you know the politics of uh, Mahabubha Ji and you know how she's nurtured the idea of healing touch in Kashmir and also how she's committed to the cause of upholding the human rights in Kashmir and very openly the way you said she's gone to the militant families, the victims, everywhere, wherever there was an assault, human rights violation, she used to reach out and what has changed if, you know, like the youngest person, Srinagar streets are today angry or the Kashmir you see young people who are angry. Mahabubha Ji has also a right to be angry. We have, she's in she power with, after why? Mufti Sahib passed away. Who is she angry with? Who is she angry with? With journalists? She has been, she, or with, with, yes, uh, with yes. the, who is she angry with? I'm coming to the point. She's continuously asking for time and she has said after, you know, the death of Mufti Sahib, she has been battling to make a stable alliance, you know, make a, a stable government in a fragile state like Jammu and Kashmir, which has a fragile peace for last many, many years. Yes. Now, it's very difficult to have a sustained peace process in state of Jammu and Kashmir to initiate an intrastate and interstate dialogue. And you know yourself how dangerous the state is and how many people are backstabbing the peace process. Now, continuously, she has been trying to initiate the process of economic development, political resolution, and you have a backlash again. So. She has been appealing to the youth in particular. That give okay. her some time. She has the credibility among the young okay. people. We all, all of us know. And today's anger. Yeah. I will accept that she was angry. Yeah. And let's bring those pictures because I want to. That uh, those pictures capture in, that anger. Yes. Who was yeah, she uh, angry with? I asked again. I, I, Who was she angry she, with? She, I mean, if she's what's wrong? If she's asking for time, what's this agitation in Jammu and Kashmir has been going from That's last six years? Question. We've been covering up. We always used to. Yes. We used to. We used to put a spring. Or we we put a hand on the spring, and the agitation is wiped out. We are today trying to address it seriously. The first time Prime Minister of India says, "Let's have a permanent solution." 
the Home Minister of India reached out twice in a month and says, I will talk to everybody in Insaniyat ke daire mein. Yeah. Now, there is, I mean, a largest section who does not want to engage or who does not want to talk. She has been continuously appealing to the central government, preparing a ground and so creating you're saying, an environment you're for peace and reconciliation. So you're saying that she should be given time now, and me. there are vested interests who don't want to give her that one, time. Let me, get, let me get Tanvir Sadiq. I think one time, yes. And let me get Tanvir Sadiq. You know, Tanvir, uh, while we talk to you, I want to bring up what Omar Abdullah said on Twitter today and a lot of people said to him, is this in good taste? Because after all, it was Omar who led the delegation uh, of the opposition parties to the Prime Minister, secured a very, very important statement from the Prime Minister. This is what Omar tweets using that particular image of Mehbooba holding her hands, look at that, and says, well, this is what the people of Kashmir feel about you. Is this the correct time to be playing party See, politics? It's not about playing politics. It's about if you have seen, I mean, in my lifetime, I haven't seen a chief minister being so impatient, it is 47 days now. 48 today. 48 today. Yeah. And continuous curfew. Yes, 70 but in 2010, dead. you went let's, to let's, exactly, you see, went we are to talking a couple about of months 2016. Of Let me first uh, complete that. Now, instead of being composed, inst instead of feeling the pain, this lady gets up, even before the Home Minister gets up, and just, you know, walks away from the press conference. Instead of telling that, look here, she feels the pain. I mean, I could see the Home Minister ready to take all the questions, but the Chief Minister is, I don't know, lost in what? Number two, very important, is that she said that those young boys didn't go f f to get milk or toffees. Does she mean that the killing was justified? And number three... No, she's saying children are being used as a shield. No, but <coughs> if, she, if, if what she says that is... That what five, are 12 and 13-year-olds doing if, out there if in the If what she says is 5%, I challenge her today, and I challenge Wahid, let her in her own constituency have a small little public meeting and say the same words what she said in the press conference that it is only five percent. She, she, she nuanced that she she kind of shifted that five percent statement today. She said I didn't. I, she said ninety five percent want a peaceful resolution. My five percent reference was to those who are using stones. But is those five percent so strong that you have to have forty seven days? So, so let me take curfew? let me take that to some bit. But I do want to ask you about that tweet by Omar Abdullah. Do you believe that today was the day to put up this mocking it's picture of Mahbuba Mufti? It's about if you are showing. If you just bring that up again. For with your yeah. actions also. What was your problem with the press conference? She was not. She didn't know what she was talking about. She was lost. If you can't take the heat, stand out of the kitchen. That's what you're saying. Okay, let me get Sambit Patra and then I'll open it up on the panel. Sambit, this is a rare moment where the BJP is accused, uh, 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 not accused, the BJP is complimented by the opposition for being softer than the PDP. So I take the compliment, no <laughs> issues at all. If they're complimenting BJP for a change, let me take the compliments uh, okay. quite humbly. Okay. But I would say that whatever I have heard of Mehbooba Mufti ji during this uh, Kashmir <laughs> crisis, I have seen her as a strong leader. Remember the first time she came out and addressed the public, the way she spoke, the candidness with which she opened up to the people of the country, in fact, saying that, well, these uh, these bache, the, the, these uh, children who are carrying stones in their hand, there are people who are conspirators behind these children. And in fact, she reminded the whole world that, well, there are separatist leaders, there are leaders from across Pakistan whose children are studying in foreign universities, who are studying outside, okay. and they are the instigators. So let's get the centers. others. Let's so she minced no words. Okay. She minced no words to bring out the truth. And I think we should uh, we, we should be applauding a chief minister who comes out with such kind of candid so, so, uh, statements. So, so, so let me just get, let me get the others who haven't spoken. General Hasnain, one of the big announcements by Rajnath Singh was in three, four days, we should be able to announce an alternative to pellet guns. In my opinion, the wisest statement has actually come from the Northern Army Commander General Huda, who first spoke about everybody de-escalate, everybody step back, let everybody sit at the table. The Army, sir, as you would know, has recommended very specific replacements to pellet guns, including chili grenades, uh, sonic uh, cannons, uh, pepper sprays, and so on. What did you make of the press conference today, sir? Um... Barka, first of all, let me say today is Jan Mashtami. Yes. I think that is, aspect has been forgotten. It's a happy day all over India. Yes. It should be a happy day in Kashmir. And I was hoping that the uh, message coming out of the press conference would be a happy one. Now, obviously, we are in difficult times. One would not expect some, some marvel all of a sudden to find everything improving in a single press conference. I still feel that the press conference conveyed a lot which had not been conveyed so far in the last 47, 48 days. Like what? Without like, taking any political like sides at like all. Like what? Like let, what? Let me, let, me, let, me just, let me just finish. 
First of all, I think uh, the Home Minister, Mr. Rajnath, very positive body language, very positive words spoken, uh, very conciliatory. That's the kind of message in a difficult time such as this. Now, let me come to the political part of it in which I take no sides. Yes. I have been a very appreciative of Mr. Omar Abdullah's efforts yes. of actually putting things together. I've seen his entire interview with you. Yes. I think he put things in perspective extremely well. But then he's not in power today. Yes. And he was in power in 2010. So that's a different thing. Okay. Today, Mehbooba is in power. And she is feeling the pinch. She is feeling the weight of the crown that she is wearing. To expect her to come out of it in a normal circumstances of 47 days of strife is a difficult thing to do. Okay. I would not expect her to be normal. She's under tremendous pressure. Yes. The fact that she's come on and taken on a press conference is a very, very positive sign. I'm expecting that in the next three, four, five days, as the situation on the ground improves, and I'm very positive about that, because today one has been monitoring, things are improving, it seems. As the weariness, as the stamina starts wearing out, as the logistics on the ground start wearing out, which invariably happens, I find that you will find that the political figures in Kashmir will start getting more functional. Okay. And I hope that will happen, and that will lead to more conciliatory gestures, and hopefully a return of peace. Let me so I'm not negative at all about this. On the aspect of your pellet guns, yeah. let me tell you. Yeah, and let's bring up some pictures pellet there of, what, of, of the pictures that have today. come out of the valley of these pellet uh, injuries. Uh, go ahead, General Hasan. I, I'm fully aware. I'm fully aware of that. This has been a problem right since 2008. Looking for non-lethal weapons has been a task which uh, the uh, CPFs, CAPFs have been doing. We may have gone wrong in acquiring the type of weapons that we acquired and possibly not even utilizing them in the right way. And that's an acceptance at the moment. The fact that the Home Minister has admitted it, is a very, and candidly admitted it, is a very, very brave admission, let me say. And the fact that he has said in the next three, four days they're going to remove them altogether is again a very, very positive statement. That should by itself send a very conciliatory message to everyone down the line that hopefully peace is returning to Kashmir. Let me bring in uh, how how those who, as Rajnath Singh said, don't agree with our ideology see this. Hamida Naeem, to me, one of the most important statements that the Home Minister made is that we are ready to talk to all, including those with differing ideologies. Yes, the prescription he has put is Kashmiriya, Jamuriyat, Insaniyat, but that was Vajpayee's formula too. Do you not believe that the separatists, and I'm not saying this will happen overnight, I'm not saying that today will happen tomorrow, but do you not think that it is now incumbent upon the separatists to also meet the Home Minister halfway? Uh, Barkha, they have already said that certain solid steps need to be taken on the ground. If you are making an outreach to those who are fighting you, you have to first of all remove all those blockades and barricades which are between you and them in order to embrace them. And another thing which you are saying that they are following the uh, principles of Jamuret, Insaniyat and whatever. Yeah. I said BJP has actually abused its own leader by perverting these terms into Jabriyat, into Barbariyat and into Jamsangiyat. Because these were the cornerstones of Vajpayee's policy that these were the guiding principles which will guide him in the resolution of Kashmir issue as an out-of-box policy. But now today they are throwing these words back on us but and I mean asking us that you should believe in now. Now Barkha please listen to me. Now we do believe in democracy because 1200 villages have come on the streets, all the towns have come on the streets democratically, we have expressed ourselves, we have spoken, we have said we want Azadi from India. What more do you know? What clearer statement is there? But needed Amira from Naeem, the fact is now, that every government, now, now, every government, now, now, let me just now, ask you a question. Now, let me ask you a question. Says, let me ask you a question. Home Minister says, Home Minister says, that I will, be, I will, I will meet everyone, including them. Yes. Now, if if he can solve the problem by meeting everyone other than them, then then see what the situation has. This situation improved because he has spoken to everyone. 
But where now is you the know everyone? That the my question is, them. my question now you is, know. Now ma'am, you ma'am, know let me not get a question in. Them. Ma'am, let me you get a question in. Let me get a question. Let me get a question. Agreeing with you. मुझे पूछने तो दीजिए कुछ. मैं ये बोल रही हूँ. मैं ये बोल रही हूँ. That अगर वो बात नहीं करते तो आप लोग कहते हैं वो कुछ नहीं करते. अगर वो कहते हैं मैं सबसे तैयार हूँ बात करने के लिए तो आप लोग कहते हैं क्या फायदा हम तो सिर्फ आजादी चाहते हैं ना. The point is so whether Vajpayee, whether Vajpayee or or Manmohan Singh or Narendra Modi, nobody will change the nobody will change the borders of India. They will not be redrawn. So we have to look for other solutions. Yeah. Ma'am, ma'am, I'll come back to you. Let me respond. Okay, briefly. They you are, Manus, you come. Manus, you are serious. Manus, you are serious about any meaningful dialogue. Then you will do homework and send a formal letter to them. Today you have kept them caged and you ask them to come and talk to me. This is ridiculous. This is so. Let me get Shahid. Let me get Shahid, and then let me get everybody else to come. Shahid hasn't spoken yet. Shahid, you were among those who met with Rajnath Singh uh, as part of his track to exploratory talks here in Delhi. How do you see what's happened so far? Barka, my connection was very bad, so I didn't hear uh, most of the discussion which has taken place in the stu studio. But uh, I, I'll answer your question. You see, our our idea was to go and talk to him and present the the pain of Kashmir. I mean, we 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 went there because we have been dealing with Kashmir. At least I have been dealing for decades. Mr. Ansari, who was an interlocutor, has been dealing with Kashmir and the issues in Kashmir for long. Yes. And we have been visiting Kashmir. So, what what our idea was. that there has to be engagement there yes. has to be talks yes. we have to go on yes. we didn't expect the, the the separatists to come and talk to the home minister we didn't expect the huriyat to come and talk to the home minister as soon as he lands there no that was not expected but some openings have to be made some beginning has to be there and from there we have to take up but my, my the point i made to the home minister also that every time there is violence in kashmir we you you know react and respond to the situation but as soon as situation normalizes we forget about kashmir and that should not no. happen there has to be persistent consistent dialogue and we have to find ways ways Okay. I will say within the within the framework of our constitution, but and, and I remember I, I was part of that when when Atal ji made his effort, and we we were able to find a workable solution with Musharraf Saab in Pakistan, and that is that is where here we have to normalize okay, the situation. Get, we have to talk to Pakistan, now. and that. Let me get reactions now. Tell me, you wanted to come in and submit. See, Barkha, that, see, that Barkha, are my to point, my point is just Kashmir. simple. You know, New Delhi doesn't have the best of track records when dealing with Kashmir. good it's a very positive response a positive step that the home minister has taken but by tweeting by saying that insaniyat jamhooriyat and kashmiriyat mein i can speak to any anyone you don't expect the moderate huriyat or a person that takes time you i know, know i agree i agree yes but you don't like expect the succeeded you don't it's expect like the, the congress succeeded in those talks in fact the only person who succeeded my point is different my point is different you yeah. don't expect a huriyat leader to come on your door knocking okay i need to speak you need to start the track true you need to send people there overtly or overtly whatever but you need to start a political dialogue it's not happening Absolutely. already I, i believe the then the home minister won't have said what he said okay let me get some bit in some bit some bit we have to remember a few important things over here number one the home minister said that he would like to talk to all the stakeholders but within the framework of indian constitution and today when i was going through the headlines of many newspaper one of the important headlines was that huriyat said that we would not talk within the frameworks of indian constitution because i quote we do not have faith in indian constitution so i believe each one of us present over here in the panel would agree to the fact that any solution has to be found within the frameworks of the constitution of this country the constitution of this country cannot be kept aside number 2 i disagree with what mr sail siddiqui said that uh, whenever there is violence that's the only time when we remember jammu and kashmir no sir it was a diwali which the prime minister spent in jammu kashmir there was no violence then there was a package which was rightly given to jammu kashmir because it is a part of our country they are brothers and sisters and thirdly there was a, a unfortunate no, flood situation Somebody, in jammu kashmir i'm talking of the political political issue the political process not, not the I, 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 yes sir i'll, I'll complete that let me complete let, 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 let me get wide now let me get wide now let me be very okay. quick in completing okay. Okay. 10 10 seconds okay. 10 seconds okay. there was 
a flood situation in which the country was standing and rightfully so along with the people of Jammu and Kashmir. The third thing that I don't understand often is, you know, when we talk of development, as Mr. Modi spoke out uh, from uh, Uttar Pradesh, I remember when he said that, well, the hands that should carry laptop are carrying stones. Let's develop the state. Then Omar Abdullah and many others like Professor Naima, uh, President Hamida over Naim. here, yes. they say it's not Hamida Naim, sorry. They say that it's not an issue of development. Yes. It is something beyond development. Yes. It is a political Which the solution. Prime Minister and I, I, was, I was shocked today. To that. I, yeah. I, just a second. I the was shocked today when the professor, in fact, articulated articulated saying that it is only Azadi. I'm so sorry. I think if Sampit Patra is not, not on the line of his own prime minister, solution. if his prime minister agrees that it's not only the development that uh, that will solve the issue, then I believe... No, the but Azad, do you mean to say what the professor said, either that, he, that's either the, the only BJP thing, is Azadi a different line, is the only thing? Or Sampit Patra, I don't Patra agree with know his prime minister. Okay, I need to get why then. I need to get why then. I need to get why then first, then I'll come to General Hasnain, then Hamida. Wahid, the point is, you have a Muzaffar Beg, senior leader of your party, saying, agenda implement nahi ho raha hai. Agar agenda implement our party is getting discredited. The BJP is safe. How do you respond to your own MP's comments uh, made on this program last night? Look, Barka, he talked about the agenda of alliance and uh, the successive governments uh, in center and the state have been completely decomposing the Kashmir issue. This is for the first time our agenda of alliance with the larger BJP has been addressing <coughs> two particular segments related to Kashmir. Yes. That is the Kashmir issue and the issues of Kashmir. The Kashmir issue is related to the dignity and identity of the Kashmiri, which PDP from the day one has been battling for, and that has been our principal political stand. And the issues of Kashmir, which means political, economical, social, and are you happy with bureaus, the agenda roads, of Salak, alliance? Pani, because Bijiri. they they now, I'm coming to the point. Wasn't. We are yeah. happy. Certainly, we are happy with the agenda of alliance. But no, no, the, PDP, the way it's being implemented. BJP Can he please specify, BDP, specifically tell me one think, part of his agenda of alliance that has been implemented from the last one and a half year? Just one. Okay. Let if him you can't, his point. Tanvisa, Let him Tanvisa, complete. if you what you can't do in 60 years, you want to do us in six months. So I think we have been from the day one trying to implement the agenda of alliance. But agenda of alliance is a process. It's not a one-day event that you announce. Look, we have done it. It's a process. You need to create an environment between two countries, between Delhi and Srinagar. There has been complete breakdown of the trust, and there are a lot of people who are like the national congress who want to do politics. But sir, you your chief minister is How not agreeing. They are for the political she agenda. says it's only five I'm percent not, on I'm the road. Look, Tanvi, we don't. We, she said, yes, she said the 95 percent of the want people in Kashmir resolution. want a peaceful she, solution. She nuanced that statement. Want today. a peaceful resolution. I want to get a general statement. Five percent of the people. I have time only for last comments. General Hasan, are, are still indulging well, in violence. Okay, 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 five percent and ten percent then, same as it was in 2008 okay, and 2010. Okay, okay, guys, this is not about national conference versus PDP. It's much larger than that. General Hasan, go ahead. The entire problem and genesis has been the foundation of this country is the international conference. My turn, my turn. Yes, it is your turn. Yes, sir. My turn to speak. Six months, not even six months gone by, I think it's a little unfair to pass judgment on a government at the moment. Give it time. I think, I hope things will improve. But more important point which I want to make is, I want all the panelists to again revert back a couple of years and look at this whole situation from a slightly positive angle. Okay, things may have gone wrong, but look at what General Huda said just the other day. I agree. And I take a cue from that. Yeah. Go back to 2011. Why was there such an excitement in Kashmir that time when the army had undertaken a lot of initiatives? The chief minister had fully given his backing to it. Every political party, every functionary on ground had given the backing to it. And all the people were excited about the fact that we were once again engaging people. Yes. This carried on for the next two to three years and somehow it stopped somewhere yeah. for whatever fault it was. Yeah. Why can't we look at this entire issue positively and think back to what was the right things which were done in 2011? Okay, can I, can I, can I and just... possibly that may give us some cues. Yeah, I think that's a fair point and I, I, I still think that the wisest statement in 48 days has come from General Huda. Uh, Hamida, quick last word from you. One of the things that Muzaffar Beg said was, he said, Kashmiriyat insaniyat jamuriyat to ek taraf thehri, ab ek nai cheez aagai hai, wo hai Pakistaniyat. And how, are, how is any government supposed to deal with Pakistaniyat? How do you respond to this very quickly and then Before Sambit can take the last word? Yes. Before I answer that question, I would like to respond to some bit the earlier question he raised that why, why, why does she say Azadi? 
I am not saying, I said what people have been saying on the ground. Hmm. And then you have to listen to people and come on the negotiating table. Now, as a large, so called largest democracy of a billion people should have the generosity and magnanimity of being kind to it is those whom they consider to, to be citizens. I to respond to that, but quick come comment on Pakistanis. Quick them. comment on Pakistanis. Now, listen to them. Quick another comment. Thi huh. Another thing is, another thing is these steps need to be taken. This government should go shamelessly today. The innocent killings have been justified by the chief minister. This is the greatest irritant today. And oh, then, instead of demilitarization, you have started remilitarizing Kashmir. Twenty schools have been occupied yesterday. Before it was so prefaced. Let me get Sambit to come in on that. Let me get Sambit to come in on that. Sambit, Sambit I have to close, but Sambit, last word. Sambit, last word. I have to close then. Sambit. See, I, I firmly stand as the government stands with these three essentially important words coined by Mr. Bajpayee, Jamhuriyat, Insaniyat, Kashmiriyat. Even Mr. Modi said that we work by these three. But as reiterated by the Home Minister, there is no place for Havaniyat. And I would just like to close by reminding all of us that only about few hours before this debate takes place, there were a number of security forces who have been injured in Pulwama because behind these stone pelters, there were uh, militants who three grenade bombs at our security men okay. so a fine balance has to be maintained a balance where we know how to save our civilians how to respect it's our civilians and, and yet story. to see that our security That's men also don't lose their Baka lives yeah. please for god's sake we have to think for both now, sides now, now, Wolf and now, one minute one minute one minute i think we do have to agree that 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 this is a complex situation where we have to appreciate that it is from a man in uniform that the comment came, let us all step back, sit at the table, all of no. us, the forces, the government, the students, the separatists. This came from the Northern Army commander. So let's not, let's keep that in mind while we look uh, look forward uh, at what has happened today. Yes, leaving it so there, bad leaving bad it bad there. Bad I'm bad out bad of time. Hamida Naeem, Shahid Siddiqui, sorry, out of time. We'll keep continuing with our Kashmir conversations. Thank you so much.